Wyoming, Ohio, 3 WJ. Our engineer is John Chicksaw, and we are in the stadium where the Indians will take on the New York Yankees tonight, a family night, Memorial Day, and tomorrow night the Indians will be right back here with the Yankees again. Tonight for the Indians, Rick Waits gets the call. Rick, the left hand, has won three and lost four. His earned run average stands at 3.49. He suffered a loss last week in the the Yankees, his only decision this year against New York, and his lifetime mark, two wins, five losses against the Yankees. The Yankee pitcher, fellow who has not pitched since last July, Andy Messersmith. Messersmith, while I was in the American League with the California Angels, had a 4-2 and two record against the Indians, and Andy Messersmith, coming back from not only elbow surgery, he hurt his elbow last July, making a throw to first base, had some surgery on that right elbow, and then in spring training with the Yankees, they told me he was throwing the ball very, very well. He suffered a broken collarbone, and he's been out of action ever since. He did some throwing in New York last week. They were satisfied that he's sound, and so he will make his first appearance of the year. Mr. Smith, six feet, one inch tall. He's about 200 pounds and 32 years old, and he has one of the best change-ups I have ever seen. Also a good fastball and slider. Andy Messersmith will go against Rick Waits in this one, and we'll be back to run down the lineups and talk about the umpires that we have this time out. The day is done. Coming home. It's time to let it go. It's the moment to unwind. Welcome home. So just say, bud. Say, bud. And for the king of men, and settle back. And to please yourself, no matter what you do, no matter when or where, you know a glass of blood is like an easy chair when you say blood like Let me tell you something I learned a long time ago. When you work hard, you ought to relax. Easy. That's what Budweiser is all about. When you say Budweiser, you say it all. Anheuser Busch, St. Louis. A line drive to deep center. Tommy Mullen's got to get on his horse to get this one going, going. But he's there and makes the catch. Good job by Tommy. So Ever wonder what an Alcilia thinks about when he drops way back to get under one of those flies? He seems relaxed enough out there, and in that split second before the ball drops into his glove, he might work his jaw once or twice. The reason for that calm look and that slight movement of the jaw might not be his stealing herbs. More likely, it's his chewing tobacco. For a lot of major leaguers, the only tobacco to chew is mail pouch. Some say it relaxes them, takes the dry right away, gives them a pickup. And a lot of them make it their choice for the same reason you do because mail pouch has a taste that's always clean and fresh. A taste that comes only from the finest blend of tobacco leaves, flavored just right. A taste that's in a class by itself. And that goes a long way to get you through the day on the bright side, whatever your game is. Mail pouch. Treat yourself to the best. This is 3WJ, Central Ohio's home for the Cleveland Cavaliers, Browns, and Indians. WWWJ, Johnstown. As I'm meeting at home plate with Billy Martin and Jeff Torborg, and now we'll run down the lineup. For the Yankees, leading off the center field of Mickey Rivers. He's batting at 288. Willie Randolph will be at second base at 280 batter. Thurman Munson from Canton, Ohio. The catcher hitting at 284. In the cleanup spot, Lou Pinella. Pinella batting at 339. He'll play left field. At first base, batting fifth, Chris Shambliss. Shambliss sitting at 323. It's Greg Nettles at third base. Nettles a 273 hitter. The designated hitter will be Cliff Johnson. He's hitting 187. Right fielder Paul Blair, 237 is batting average. And at shortstop, batting ninth, Bucky Dent. Dent hitting at 236. Reggie Jackson not in the lineup today. Reggie has a strained muscle in his groin. It's something that's plagued him on and off about the last month. And he heard it again against Toronto over the weekend, and so he's out of the lineup a few days. For the Indians, leading off the center fielder, Rick Manning. Manning batting at 232. Jim Norris will play right field, batting average of 284. Batting third, 
The third baseman, Buddy Bell, 305 is batting average. Johnny Grubb will hit cleanup. Cleanup spot held by Johnny Grubb, and he's hitting at 269, playing left field. Wayne Cage is first base, a 261 hitter. The designated hitter batting sixth is Ted Cox. Cox batting at 180. Dwayne Kipe will be at second base. Kipe batting at 238. The catch is Ron Hansey, batting average of 220. And at shortstop, batting ninth, Tom Mariza. Tommy with a 269 batting average. Umpires behind the plate to call balls and strikes. Larry McCoy. At first base, Hank Saw. He's a, a retired umpire, and he's been an umpire for over 20 years in the major leagues. The last few years he's been retired, but he still comes around and fills in when somebody needs a day off. Don Dinkinger, the umpire at second base, and the third base umpire will be Dave Phillips. Well, that's the way they line up umpire-wise. The Indians still without the service of Andre Thornton, although he's feeling much better. He went down and took some practice, batting practice in the cage. And so... Andy feeling a lot better, and they think that maybe over the weekend he'll be able to be back in action. Just had an announcement as to what happened. Umpire Steve Palan will maybe Joe caught it, and we'll catch up with that later on. We're sorry to hear that Steve Palamo not here tonight due to a death in his family. And that's the reason Hank Saw is filling in. Rocco Scotty is poised behind the microphone at home plate. And tonight they inform us that Rocco will be leading us in the singing of America the Beautiful. And now we'll pause as Rocco will sing America the Beautiful. authorized in the broadcast rights granted by Cleveland Indians Company solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. Any rebroadcast about the use of the accounts and descriptions of this game without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians and 3WE Radio is prohibited. 76 degrees here at the stadium. It has been a really delightful day. We hope you enjoyed yourself and that you are winding your way down here to be with us. The Indians will take on the Yankees tonight and again tomorrow night. Yankees with 28 wins, 15 losses on the year. The Indians are 20 and 23. The Yankees chasing the Boston Red Sox in the Eastern Division. They are two games back of the Red Sox. And we'll have some to tell you about the Boston Red Sox when we get into our scoreboard show. In fact, we'll do that in just a moment. Joe's just putting the finishing touches on what happened this afternoon in baseball. Rick Waits against the Yankees. 0-1 this year, 2-5 in his career. The 6'3", 195-pound left standard is 26 years old. All right, in afternoon baseball, the Boston Red Sox defeated the Toronto Blue Jays 5-4 as Therese picked up his seventh win of the year. And Evans had his tenth home run for Boston. Bailey had one his second, and Howell had one for Toronto. Oakland down Milwaukee 6-2, and in Chicago, the White Sox won their third straight. They shut out the California Angels 7-0 behind Torrealba. 
the only complete scores we have, and we'll check on the other games as we go along here tonight. For the Indians, it's Rick Waits. He grabs a rosin sack, flips it away, says he's ready to go. Mickey Rivers steps in. He's ready to go. And here's the fellow that's always ready to go. Joe Tate, he's about to tell you that it is. A beautiful night for baseball. Thank you, Herb. Good evening, everybody. First pitch from Waits to the left-hand batting Mickey Rivers is high and inside. Ball one, and the game is underway. Waits at three and four, zip and one against the Yankees in two starts. Here's the pitch to Rivers. Curveball for a strike, and the count is one and one. Talk about other games going on, Joe. The St. Louis Cardinals are not having much success on Memorial Day. They have been having a tough time. It looks just as tough today. Here's the pitch to Rivers, wrapped to the mound, and one hop, Wake turns, throws the first to Wayne Cage, and there's one out. Rivers came in hitting 288 with three homers, 17 RBIs, and four for 10 against the Tribe with one run batted in. Brings up the right-hand batting second baseman, Willie Randolph, hitting at 281, homer, 15 RBIs, and two for 11 against the Indians thus far this year. Pitch to Randolph, high and inside, ball one. With Martinez and Bruce Boyclair hitting two run homers, the Mets now lead the Cardinals at the end of five in that first of two, six to two. Pitch is a fastball low, and they count his ball two. Cardinals have lost four in a row, and they're what, 15 out of 16? Right. Whew. Wind up, pitch, Randolph takes high and inside, and the count goes to three and all. Oh. Cage at first, Kuiper at second, Verizer at short, Bell at third, Grubb in left, Manning in center, Norris in right, Hassey catching, and the left-hander Rick Waits with a 3-0 pitch to Willie Randolph. That's a strike of the knees, and the count is 3-1. and one. Gene Michael coaching at first, Dick Hauser at third. Wind up by Waits, 3-1 pitch, outside and high, ball four. And so with one out, there is one on. Waits has worked 59 and two-thirds innings. That was his 22nd walk. He has struck out 32. Here's Thurman Munson. Munson, a right-hand batter at 284, one homer, 23 RBIs, nine for 20 against Cleveland thus far this year with five runs batted in. Kuiper in to talk to Waits. Herb, here is a fellow after your own heart. Stephen Bass ran from Westlake to the stadium for the ball game. 13 miles. Wants his mom to know he made it just fine. Come, Why on, don't you come do that? down and pick him up. Why don't you do that? You could run from your home down here to the ballpark. Sure could. Get in your running. Mm-hmm. Who'd get me up here to the booth? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the stretch by Wade. Pitch to the right hand batter. Bounces in and right back to the screen. Hampy chases it down on the warning path, and Randolph rounds second and hangs on with a wild pitch. Charged to Waits. And that was a wild pitch in the truest sense of the word. It well, bounced, bounced in front right. of the plate and went all the way to the screen. Bounced right in front of Thurman Munson. He spun out of the way. He made it even more difficult for Hansi because I don't think he ever saw the ball. Well, we have a load of cookies provided by Jesse L. Ramsey, a fan of the Indians for over 40 years. She is with a group of 20 other Indian fans from Hubbard, Ohio. The Vukovic family, the Andrasso family, Elaine Zipnik, Rick Williams and Gail Copps, Bill Forrester and Jenna Julian and Bob Williams. Here's the stretch by Waits, the 1-0 pitch inside at the letters, ball two to Munson. And uh, Jesse says she'd like Jack Teal and Dick Tate to know and uh, big yuck <laughs> to Bill Graben who's rooting for the Yankees. How about that? Thank you. The cookies have been already devoured. <laughs> Pitch, a strike of the knees of the curveball, 2-1, but, but not, not by not your by friendly us. broadcast. No, not no. us. You put a cookie on that deck behind us, and I want to tell you, folks, the cookie monsters just come down like a plague of locusts. Stretch, 2-1 pitch. Munson hits the curveball into the hole and into left field. Between Bell and Verizer, Randolph had to hold up with Bell breaking to his left. Now the ball gets through. Here comes Hassey with the ball. They got Randolph hung up. Hassey running it back to third. Flips to Bell. Tag on him down to second base. Punches. Well, that time when the ball skidded through and the throw back in, Randolph came down the line at third. Hassey pounced to the ball. And then went back to Buddy Bell for the tag. Munson went to second base on the throw on the rundown. Out goes 7-2-5. 
They'll have saved 7 5 2 5 because of Touch Buddy going by. So there are two outs now with a runner at second base. That's the first Yankee hit. Lou Pinello, the batter, right hand hitter, 339, one homer, 18 runs batted in, four for 17 against the Tribe with three ribbies. First pitch is the curveball, strike one. Yancey got up ready to throw. Munson had a huge lead at second base, but now goes back. Lou Pinella, right-hand batter. Two outs with a runner at second base in the first inning. Chris Chamble is on deck. Waits takes the long look. A stretch. And the pitch to Pinella. Fastball low, one in one. Pinella's hit in six straight ball games, failed to get a hit in only five games all year, and he has reached base in all but three of the games in which he has played. Stretch by Waits. And the 1-1 offering to Pinella. The curveball is chopped foul behind home plate. One ball, two strikes. The Indians and the Yankees, the first of a brief two-game series, and the Yankees won't be back here until the end of September. Waits looking in for the sign. Stretches. And delivers one, two. Pinella, it's a big bouncer back toward the shortstop. Bell cuts in front of a riser, grabs and throws. He is out. And the side is retired. No runs ahead of walk and a man left. And at the end of one half inning of play, the Yankees nothing and the Indians are coming to bat. It's new. It's Danny Certified Station at the corner of Broad Street and Summit Road, just east of Columbus. At Danny's, fast and friendly service is their policy, and they'll stand behind it. Aside from carrying fine certified gasoline, they carry most major brands of oil, and soon there's going to be a full-service garage. For you early risers, Danny Certified is open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 6 to 11 Friday and Saturday, and 8 to 8 on Sunday. Danny Certified Station, on Broad Street in Summit Station, across from the old Summit Town Restaurant. On Broad Street, we're halfway between Columbus and Newark. We sell new boards, we will save you money. In fact, we have a little statement we make. If we can't save you money on a new board, I'll buy you two steak dinners. And we don't buy very many steak dinners. So come on over and see us. We've got a fine selection right now. New and used cars, over 200 new cars, almost 100 used cars. So if you want a new Ford or a used car, come see us on Broad Street. Andy Messersmith will be pitching for the New York Yankees tonight. He is a right-hander. Messersmith, 6'1", 200 pounds with Atlanta plagued with injuries last year. He got into only 16 games, 1-5, lost 4 with a 4.41 ERA. It is located shoulder this spring and has just now come back on the active roster. In fact, the Yankees reinstated him today and Mickey Klutz was optioned to the coma. The Yankees yesterday also placed Catfish Hunter on the 21-day disabled list as he continues to have problems with stiffness in his shoulders. Talking about on a road trip, we just got back. Mike Sagan just showed up with the itinerary for the next trip. Uh, you, you don't even have a chance to unpack your bag and they give you another right itinerary. Rocky Calavito coaching at first, Joan Asik at third. It'll be Manning, Norris, and Bell in the first inning against Messer Smith. Defensively for the Yankees, Chambliss at first, Randolph at second, Dent at short, Nettles at third, Pinella in left, Rivers in center, Blair in right, Munson catching. And Mesher Smith on the mound. This is the first pitch that he has thrown for the Yankees right here. Pitch to Manning. Outside. Ball one. No score home half of the first inning. Wind up on the 1-0 pitch. Manning hits a high drive to right field. Going back is Flair. Still going back. And he caught the ball in the warning pass. One out. Well, that Blair makes it look so easy out there. Uh, you know, he can afford to play a little more shallow because he goes back so well on a ball. The thing that he does is maybe in the in your lifetime you'll see two or three outfielders do it. 
He will turn his back on the ball and not even look. Just run to a spot, turn around, and there it is. Jim Norris, left-hand batter, one for five against the Yankees thus far this year, a 284 batting average, one homer and seven runs batted him. First pitch to Jimmy. He takes a fastball, though, and inside ball one. Norris has hit, uh, had hits in seven of his last eight ball games. Wind up on the pitch by Mesher Smith that is low, and the count is ball two. We have failed to mention that Manning was hitting 232 coming in with a homer, 12 RBIs and is now 3 for 14 against the Yankees this year. There's a line drive at its center field base hit. Rivers plays it in one hop, and Jimmy Norris drills a single to center field. That evens the hits at one. Buddy Bell, the batter. Right-hand hitter. Bell, a four-game hitting streak going, a 305 average. Throw over to first base. Bounces into Chambliss. Mm. Chris made a good pickup. That ball hadn't bounced. It might have been close over there. Bell, 305, one homer, 17 RBIs, three for 12 against the Yankees with one run batted in. Pitch to Buddy. Big bouncer back to third. Nettles over to second base. One back to first. Not in time. Oh, yes. Oh, my. They got him. That was very close. Oh, a 5-4-3 double play retires the side, and it's no runs and a hit with nobody left. And at the end of one, there is no score at Cleveland. Do it any way you want to, but do it in a Dodge from Spencer Dodge in Columbus. The 1978 Dodge line is the best ever, featuring the new Magnum XE, the totally personal approach to driving excitement. The Magnum XE is your own private island. The most tempting of this year's line is the 78 Dodge Diplomat, a car that fits everyone to a T. And of course, the Dodge vans are in a class by themselves. See them all at Spitzer Dodge, 5100 East Main, Columbus. Dodge, depend on it. National Lampoon presents True Facts. Authentic, documented, we kid you not, strictly on the up and up, verified, absolutely the real thing, honest to goodness, unadulterated. And now the True Facts are yours, Monday through Friday nights at 11.55, right here on 3WJ Mellow Rock 103. A couple of twin-eye doubleheaders going at New York. The Mets now lead the Cardinals 7-2 at the end of six innings of play. And the first of two at Arlington, Texas. Texas leads the Minnesota 4 to nothing in the fourth inning of play. Serum against Ellis. Here it's the second inning of the stadium in a scoreless game. And Chris Chambliss will start it off against Rick Waits. Chambliss, 323 average, fouls one back of the screen, strike one. He has three homers, 32 RBIs, four for 15 with a home run and five runs batted in against Cleveland. Chambliss has hit safely in 10 of his last 11 games. 420 is average with 12 RBIs over that span. Curve ball is low. One ball, one strike. Cincinnati's going to use Paul Moscow tonight down in Atlanta against Mickey Mahler. Strike at the knees to Chambliss. One ball and two strikes. What is going on with those red-hot cups? Yeah, they're playing tonight in Montreal. There's a slap on the ground. It creates the third baseman. Turns, throws over to wait. Chambliss is out three to one. Well, we have one out of the second inning, and Greg Nettles the batter. Left-hand hitter. Hitting 273, seven homers, 20 RBIs, four for 15 against Cleveland with one homer and three runs batted in. Nettles had a nine-game hitting streak stopped in, second, in the second game of yesterday's doubleheader, but in his last 10 games, he's hitting 380. Curveball, strike of the knees, strike one. In May, he's hitting 320 with six homers and 17 RBIs. Waits working on him with one out and nobody on in the second inning of a scoreless game. Strike one pitch, curveball low and outside. One ball, one strike. Of 
Wind up with the next pitch. Curveball, though, bounces away from Hassey up the first baseline. Two balls and a strike. They have posted the pitchers now in Montreal for the Cub Expo game. Woody Fryman will be going for the Chicago Cubs tonight. And Ross Grimsley will be going for Montreal. Pitch, swing, and a foul tip back, 2-2. Grimsley is 7-1 on the year. Wind up for the next pitch. Curveball, swing, and a miss. Struck him out. Nettle strikes out. First strikeout for Waits. Two outs in the second inning, and the batter is the right-hand hitting Cliff Johnson, the designated hitter. Hitting 187 with two homers and eight runs batted, and he's two for six against the Tribe with one run batted in. Waits looks him over. Winds up. Here's the first pitch to Cliff Jansen. Strike to the knees. Strike one. Waits in his two previous starts won only five and two-thirds innings against the Yankees. Strike at the knees. Strike two. Paul Blair on deck. Johnson stepping back as that Dark blue 41 on trimmed in white on the back of his gray Yankee uniform. Rick Waits looks into Hassey for the sign. Here comes the two-strike pitch. Low bounces away from Hassey, and the count is one and two. Top of the second, there's no score. White Sox beat the Angels 7-0. Oakland top Milwaukee 6-2. Boston edge Toronto 5-4. One-two pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Oh, wait. Gets some one, two, three in the second inning. And at the end of an inning and a half, it's New York nothing, Cleveland nothing. Bush, St. Louis. Baseball. Well, home half of the second inning, Grub Cage and Cox waiting to bat as Jeff Torborg has a long conversation with Larry McCoy, the home plate umpire. I don't know what that's all about, Joe. As soon as the inning ended, Jeff came out to home plate, and the whole time he was standing there talking to McCoy, it was not a angry type of discussion, but... Apparently, Jeff has discovered something or thinks he sees something. He wants to check on Larry McCoy about it. Johnny Grubb steps in. Left-hand batter. 269, five homers, 14 RBIs. Two for seven against the Yankees this year. Mesher Smith throws. Grubb swings and misses strike one. There's that changeup. He has as good a changeup as you'll find anywhere. Grubb is it safely in six of his last seven games, hitting 381 over that span. Strike one pitch. Outside. A ball and a strike. Boston, with that win this afternoon, is now 33 and 15 on the year. Next pitch inside of the left hand batter. Two balls and a strike. Next pitch and Grubb swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes. Andy Messersmith 
Wheels and deals, and Grubb takes slow and outside, a full count of three and two. And the next offering to Grubb is low ball four. Now Johnny Grubb works his way for a walk, leading off in the second inning. Wayne Cage, the left-hand batting first baseman, steps in. Cage at 261, one homer, four RBIs, two for four against the Yankees this year with one run batted in. He's hit safely in his last four ball games with five hits and 15 at-bats. Chambliss holds to the bag with Grubb, and Messersmith throws over. Grubb back. Ted Cox on deck. Each team with a base hit. Game scoreless, home half of the second. Stretch of the pitch. Cage takes low. Ball one. 76 degrees here at the stadium after a beautiful day in Cleveland. A stretch. Mesher Smith checks the runner, throws to Cage. Wayne, line drive to Nettle. Throw back to first, not in time. Cage hit a bullet right at Greg Nettles, the third baseman. He hit it right on the nose. One out. Ted Cox, the designated hitter, hitting at 180 with four RBIs, 0 for 7 against the Yankees thus far this year. Oh, we've seen Ted in left field, right field, first base. Shortstop even for an inning. Andy Mesher Smith working from the stretch with Grubb at first base and one out. Stretch and pitch, and Cox hits a drive into right center field. Blair racing over, cut the ball. Grubb turns and gallops back to first. Two outs, that ball started to sink out there in right center field, but Paul Blair galloped over, reached down, and picked it off just above the knees. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Cleveland Indians Baseball Network. This is 3WJ, Central Ohio's home for the Cleveland Cavaliers, Browns, and Indians. WWWJ, Johnstown. Dean Kuiper, left-hand hitting second baseman. 238 batting average, 14 RBIs. 4 for 14 against the Yankees. Pitch to him, and Dwayne takes it inside, ball one. Ron Hassey on deck. Next pitch, Kuiper check swing, pitch low. Munson jumps on it. No go at first base by Grubb. We're in the home half of the second inning. Two outs and a runner at first base. Andy Messersmith debuting for the Yankees tonight. Here's the pitch. Runner goes. Pitch high and tight. Throw to second base. Ball bounces away into center field. Grubb picks himself up, running to third base. Stolen base and a throwing error. The throwing error is charged to Munson, obviously, the catcher. And for Johnny Grubb, that is his third steal of the year without being caught. Well, the Indians with a runner at third base. Two outs and a 3-0 count on Kuiper. Two outs here in the second inning. A stretch, 3-0 pitch. Kuiper takes a strike, and the count is 3-1. Ron Hassey on deck. Mesher Smith looks in again. A stretch, checks third, 3-1 to Kuiper. Dwayne pops it up. Foul ball, Munson coming back. At the railing, caught. Oh, he had the ball, but he's out. out. The fan fan interference. Well, you don't see it called often, but it was a correct call because Munson would have caught the ball. A young man sitting in the, youngster sitting in the second row went all the way down to the front row and leaned over. 
No, it is no runs. No hits, a walk, an error, and a man left. And at the end of two innings of play, it is the Yankees nothing, the Indians nothing. You know, listening to Major League Baseball on 3WJ is a great way to follow the national pastime. But to really appreciate the game and the players' talents, at least once in a while, you should see a game in person. And those of us at 3WJ would like you to see the exciting Cleveland Indians on us during our Tribe Ticket Giveaway. All you have to do is send us your name, address, and phone number. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the noon news, we'll draw a name to win two tickets to an Indians home game of your choice. If your name is drawn, your ticket's go into the mail that same day. And we won't stick you out in the left field bleachers, but in box seats, so you'll be right next to the action. To enter, send your name, address, and phone number on a postcard or letter to Tribe Tickets, 3WJ, P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. Again, that's Tribe Tickets, P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. To win two box seat tickets to a Cleveland Indians baseball game of your choice. Entries are limited to one per week, so enter today and let 3WJ take you out to the ball game. Top of the third, the bottom two Yankees of the order, Blair and Depp to be followed by Mickey Rivers. There is no score in this ball game. Paul Blair, 237 average, one RBI, four for ten against the Indians this year, takes a pitch low ball one. Wind up by Waits, and the left-hander deals to Blair. Wrapped hard, back to the shortstop. Verizer picks it up on the second bounce, throws across. Blair is out. One down on the third. Brings up Bucky Dent, the shortstop. Bucky Dent, 236 average, one homer, 14 RBIs, five for 13 with three runs batted in against Cleveland this year. Dent is hitting 340 over his last 11 games on 13 for 38. Wind up on the pitch to Bucky. The curveball is outside ball one. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Dent. Line drive, left field, grub back, and makes the catch. Two out. Dent flies to left, two down, top of the order. Rivers bounce to the pitcher in the first inning. Mickey Rivers has hit safely in 10 of his last 11 games. First game in New York, the Mets lead the Cardinals 7-2 in the 8th inning. First game in Texas, 4-0 Rangers over Minnesota in the 5th. Pitch to Rivers, outside, ball one. Bell comes to the cut of the grass at 3rd. Willie Randolph on deck. Wind up on the pitch, low and outside. Ball two, two and oh. Now Rick Waits will change baseball with the home plate umpire Larry McCoy. This is the top of the third, two outs and nobody out. Two oh pitch, Rivers ducks back from a high tight fastball, the count is three and oh. Waits thus far, struck out two and walked one. Here's the 3-0 pitch. Rivers takes high and outside, ball four. Well, that's the second walk off Waits. Puts a very dangerous man at first base and brings up Willie Randolph. Randolph walked, got around to third base. And when the throw back in off a of Munson hit, skidded away in the infield, Randolph tried to come home and they ran him down. Stretch and the pitch. Randolph takes low and inside, ball one. Mickey Rivers has only stolen three times this year out of four attempts. So he's not really run that much. Waits looks into Hassey for the sign. Rivers leads at first base. The stretch by the left-hander. And the throw to first base, and Rivers is back. Willie Randolph. Did in his last three ball games, five for 13 in that span, hitting 360 over his last 10 games. Throw to first, Rivers back. In fact, Randolph has reached base 31 of his last 60 trips to the plate. And you can add one more to that because he walked in the first inning. Here's the stretch. 
Look to first, throw to first, and then again, Rivers back easily. I had some pretty fair crowds in baseball this afternoon. 26,000 in Boston. Almost 19 in Milwaukee. 15-5 in Chicago. Here's the stretch. There goes Rivers. The pitch is low. Hassey's throw, and he is safe. Four steals for Rivers. He got the good jump. And he picked a good, good pitch to go on. The ball was down in the dirt, hard to handle. One ball and one strike. They've got the animation working now on the big scoreboard out in center field. That time they had a furrow of ground or a tunnel of ground moving along, and then a hand came up it, touched second base. Stretch. 1 1 pitch to Randolph. Curveball swing and a miss. He almost fell down. One ball, two strikes. Thurman Munson on deck. Top of the third, two outs. No score at the stadium. Rick Waits, two and five lifetime against the Yankees. Here's the one two pitch. Bouncing foul over to the third base dugout. Billy Martin picks it off neatly. One and two. Did the same thing when he was a player. He was a pretty good second baseman. Cage, Kuiper, Verizer, and Bell around the infield first to third. Grubb, Manning, and Norris left to right. Assey catching. Rick Waits on the mound. One-two count on Randolph with two outs in the top of the third. Rivers at second base. Stretch. And Waits steps back and Rivers retreats. Again, Randolph is ready. Those Waits. Stretch in the one-two pitch. Strike three. Ball third strike. Randolph watched it go by, and the inning is over. No runs, no hits, a walk, and a man left at second base. And at the end of two and one half innings of play, Cleveland nothing, New York nothing. Add up everything in the house or apartment you rent, and it'll add up to a lot. That's why Motorist Insurance Milton L. Resch has a special policy for people who rent. If you rent, you have a lot to protect, including yourself. And Motorist Renters Insurance provides this protection. Motorist Insurance, you know us. Your motorist agent can tell you all about rates and coverages. Look them up in the phone book. Milton L. Resch, 112 International Drive in Pataskala. Motorist Insurance, you know us. Do it any way you want to, but do it in a Dodge from Spitzer Dodge in Columbus. The 1978 Dodge line is the best ever, featuring the new Magnum XE, the totally personal approach to driving excitement. The Magnum XE is your own private island. The most tempting of this year's line is the 78 Dodge Diplomat, a car that fits everyone to a T. And of course, the Dodge fans are in a class by themselves. See them all at Spitzer Dodge, 5100 East Main, Columbus. Dodge, depend on it. In the home half of the third inning, the Indians will send up Hassey, then Verizer in the top of the order, Manny, against Andy Messerschmidt. Andy, over the first two innings, has given up a hit and a walk. Norris single was short-lived because a double play grounder retired to side. Grubb walked leading off in the second inning, stole the base, went to third, and then stayed there as the Indians failed to score. Well, Ron Hassey at bat. 2.20 average, one homer, eight RBIs, two for six against New York with two runs batted in. Mesher Smith ready. Here's the windup and the pitch. It hit him. Ron Hassey hit by the pitch. Well, that hurt. Got him right above the right elbow. On the right elbow. Yeah, he is in pain. A little bang your funny bone. That's what they call a funny bone. It's not funny. Jimmy Warfield and Rocky Calavito tending to Hassey. Jeff Torbor got to take a look. Boy, he is in some kind of pain. He caught him right on the elbow. You get hit like that, it almost makes you sick to your stomach. Jimmy Warfield trying to roll up his sleeve. Now 
Randy Messerschmidt in the meantime will stay warm by throwing to Thurman Munson. They got that right shirt sleeve now rolled up so the ethyl chloride can be applied. Dodgers will look at Gaylord Perry tonight. Tommy John will be pitching. Perry is three and one on the year, and Tommy John is six and two. And they're still working on Ron Hassey. Fifth inning in Arlington, Texas, the first of a twinite doubleheader. Texas four, Minnesota nothing behind Doc Ellis. And let's see if we can get anything later on that ball game in New York. Nope, still seven to two. Mets at the end of seven. Cubs in Montreal are scoreless at the end of one inning of play in Montreal. They're still working on Hassey. He's flexing that right arm. He got hit by a pitch right on the elbow. Jeff Torborg, Rocky Calavito, Jimmy Warfield. Still spraying that area. Oh, you can see the mark up here, Herb. Yeah, now the thing they're worried about, of course, is the throwing. You know, it's right on the elbow, and as time goes on, he stiffens up a little you bit. You can see it. the discoloration from where the ball hit the arm all the way up here in the booth. Jimmy Warfield. Trying to feel around, make. Atlanta takes a one to nothing lead over Cincinnati. Down in Atlanta tonight. Now Ron Hassey. I think he's going to stay in the game. Going to hang in there. Indians have only two catches. Oh, Hassey gets the helmet back on. Going to put on the batting glove again. Jimmy Warfield talking to him and then heads back into the first base dugout. And Rocky Calavito walks along with him to first base. Hassey gets a few words of consolation from Hank Soar, the first base umpire, who has undoubtedly seen a few hit in his day. Tom Bereiser... Number nine man in the Indians order, hitting 269 with one run batted in. Three for ten against the Yankees this year. Tommy has hit safely in seven of his last eight games, and in nine of his last 11, he's hitting 306. Here's the stretch by Messersmith, and the pitch to Verizer. High ball one. Rick Manning on deck. Hassey at first base, the hard way, hit by the pitch. Nod, the stretch, and time call. Time call by the first base umpire. Hassey is apparently showing some severe pain. He's walking down the right field line, flexing it on. Talking with Rocky Calavito. You get hit on the elbow, you know, not only do you take a chance of having something broken there, but that nerve runs through there and you lose all feeling in your hand. 1-0 count. There's a throw to first base. Hassey back with a hand tag of the bag. Stretch. Another throw again. Hassey diving back with a hand tag of the bag. This time he used his right hand to tag the bag. Hassey. Sizable lead. There he goes. The ball is rammed up. Down the line, but it's fading. Foul. Verizer got it all. Hit it off the facing of the Loges about 10 feet to the left of the foul pole. The best hit baseball we've seen off Tom Verizer's bat. Oh, he clobbered it, but yes, unfortunately got around too quick. Stretch by Messersmith. As he goes again, swing and a miss. Munson's throwing the bounce. Bounces up in the air, and Randolph keeps it in front of him, and Hassey is still in second base. And he's torn the knee on his trousers. He's having a tough he's night. He's having a tough inning. Hassey, he had a big smile on his face, though, as he talks with the second base umpire, Don Denkinger. Second stolen base. One ball and two strikes. Tommy 
Bobby Verizer at bat. One, two, pitch. Tom takes one that bounces into Munson. Two balls, two strikes. Ron Hassu leads at second base. Mesher Smith shakes off one sign, nods, stretches, looks back to Hassey, throws to Verizer. Tommy wraps the ball to the shortstop. Dent going to go over to third, tagged by Nettles. Hassey's out, Verizer at first base. Well, Hassey violated the old rule. When the ball's hit in front of you like that at second base, don't go, you're dead, and he was. Fielder's choice. Hassey go to the dugout for repairs. That's like pulling in for a pit stop. <laughs> He's going to have to have his pants changed, his elbow worked on. One out with Riser at first base and the fielder's choice. 6-5 of the put out. Short stop to the third baseman. Manning the batter. Hit a fly ball deep to right of the first inning. Time call just as Measuresmith got ready to go. Home plate umpire Larry McCoy indicated time. Ron Pruitt's going down to warm up in the bullpen. We may have seen the last of Ron Hassey tonight. Well, the question about is being able to throw. Manning wraps a bouncer to the second baseman. Randolph flips to Dent one, back to first. Double play. Argument time. Oh, I don't blame him this time. Yeah. Manning, Calavito, and Torborg will all talk to Hank Storr, who called the DP to retire the side. No runs, no hits, and nobody left. At the end of three, Yankees nothing, Indians nothing. Hi, folks. Come into Lucas Appliance and TV Center today, Memorial Day, for our big, big sale. We're giving $50 bills away with many of our appliances and TVs. For example, buy a 19-inch diagonal measure GE TV. Manufacturer suggested list price $479.95 for only $399.95. It's yours, plus you get $50 in cash. Sale hours 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. Sale ends today, so hurry, hurry to Lucas Appliance and TV Center in downtown Mount Vernon, 1250. South Main Street. Hey, this is Old Jack at Ostrander Chevrolet in Mount Vernon, where you get your best buys on Chevrolets and the best buys on used cars. Back for the finest in service and a complete line of parts at Ostrander Chevrolet. Don't buy that new car or truck till you see us for the best deals at Ostrander Chevrolet in Mount Vernon on 3 and 36, the busy side of town. Al Oliver is homered in the fifth inning for Texas and knocked out Gary Serum. And the Rangers are rolling five to nothing down there in the first of their twinite doubleheader against the Minnesota Twins. And the Mets beat the Cardinals seven to two in that first game. A three hitter for Zachary. The oh, Cardinals. Oh boy, those Cardinals have now dropped five in a row in fifteen of their last sixteen. Well, Hansy's going to hang in. He's out with the catching tools on. Inning number four, and here's Herb score. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm all choked up. Hi again, everybody. The Indians and the Yankees are scoreless. About the time Joe was introduced, he had the cough. I couldn't hold it. Thurman Munson bounced a single through the left side his first time up. Munson came into the game batting at 284. He's improved on that. High pop fly, first base side, and foul. Cage waiting for it. Big first baseman puts it away. One pitch, one out of the fourth. Rick Waits has struck out three. He has walked two in this game. He only hit that bouncing single through the left side by Munson. <laughs> Lou Pinella comes along. Lou bounced out to Buddy Bell his first time up. Pinella has been on a hot streak. He's sitting at 336, and he has hit well right from the first game he's been in. Louie had some dirt in the sands, backs away, get himself adjusted. Rick Waits, Indian left-handed, kicks and throws. Throws it over the inside corner about the knee of the strike, change up, good pitch. Fast ball, outside and low, ball one on the strike.
Outfielders are playing Lou bunched up in the middle, giving him room on each line. Curveball, line to left field, coming on. Grub can't get to it, a base hit. Lou Pinella slamming the curveball to left field. That is the second hit allowed by Waits. And the batter, Chris Shambliss. Shambliss bouncing out to the first baseman, Wayne Cage, who made a fine play on the ball going to his right. Backhanded, flipped back to the pitcher covering. Curveball hits towards second. Kuiper up with it, goes to short. One, back to first. They get a double play. And at second base, Pinella might be hurt. He's down and grabbing for his leg. The double play goes 4 6 3. Fine work by Veriza and Kuiper. Pinella getting up slowly. He's all right. No runs in the inning, a hit, no errors, and nobody left. At the middle of four, the score, the Indians nothing, the Yankees nothing. The day is done. Come in home. It's time to let it go. It's the moment to unwind. So just say the bed. And for the king of beers and settle back and to please yourself. No matter what you do, no matter when or where, you know a glass of blood is like an easy chair when you say blood wants Yeah, that's right. There's nothing like getting home, especially when there's a cold can of Bud waiting for you. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. The Indians come along in the fourth inning. Norris, Bell, and Grubb will face Andy Messersmith, who has not pitched in the major league since last July. Jimmy Norris, single to center field, is only time up. And he was on the front end of a double play. Norris came into the game batting at 284. We will check his current batting average when they put it up on the scoreboard for you. Inside corner, fastball strike. Mr. Smith, not overly fast. Jimmy's now batting at 294. Slider over the inside corner, above the knees, a strike. Two strikes. Messer Smith, not overly fast, but has excellent control, moves the ball around. Has a slider. Good changeup. Swing and a miss, and oh, got a piece of it. Falls out of the glove of Munson, a life for Jim Norris. Andy Messer Smith came to the American League with the California Angels several years ago, and he has been a good pitcher. Swing and a miss, strike three on that change. For Mr. Smith, he gets his first strikeout. Now, I guess, Joe, when you talk about Andy Mr. Smith, he is the one fellow who probably had as much to do with the situation with the free agents today as anybody in baseball. They talk about Catfish Hunter, but it was really the Andy Mr. Smith decision that changed everything. Yeah, that's very true. Mr. Smith has been around baseball since 1966. Inside corner strike to Buddy Bell. Buddy bounced into a double play his first time. He's been with the Angels, with the Dodgers, and with the Atlanta Braves. 128 wins, 92 losses in his career. Swing and a miss on the letter high fastball. Been a 20 game winner twice in the major leagues with the Angels, 20 and 13 in 1971, with the Dodgers, 20 and 6 in 1974. Fastball just a bit outside. Close. One ball, two strikes to Buddy Bell. In the World Series in 1974, Andy lost two games. Ball one, strike two. Bouncing ball fouled at home plate. 
Count stays. The ball, two strikes. Nessa Smith gets the sign. Right hand winds it up and he throws. Low and inside, two and two. Atlanta two, Cincinnati nothing. They've played two in Atlanta. Cubs and Montreal scoreless after two. Outside and low, three and two. American League, it's Texas five, Minnesota nothing in the last half of the sixth inning. This is the first of a doubleheader down in Texas. 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three with a slider. Andy Messersmith strikes out the first two here in the fourth inning. Two up, two down. Getting his first two strikeouts. And the banner will be Johnny Grubb. The Indians and the Yankees are scoreless. The Yankees have two hits. The Indians have one. Grubb reached base in the second inning of the walk. Stole second. Went to third when the throw went in the center field. And that's where he died. Right hand winds it up and he throws. Bouncing ball foul. First base side. Rocky Calabito. Spears it in the coaching box. Throws it into the umpire to be examined. And the umpire says, okay, let's throw it out and give him another one. Umpire back of the plate, Larry McCoy. Larry working with that inside chest protector. Pitch the grub. It's a foul tip. Hits the bat. Goes back to the screen. He was taking that pitch off the inside corner. The ball hit. And bounce back to the screen. Down she low. Ball one, strike two. Johnny Grubb. Trying to get something working for the Indians here in the fourth inning. Two men out. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. That looked like the changeup. And Andy Messersmith strikes out the side in the fourth inning. Three up, three down, nothing across. At the end of four, the score. The Yankees nothing, the Indians nothing. Only the rich can afford to buy elsewhere. That's a little slogan that I've made up. This is Dave Smith of Dave Smith Ford. And that is right, only the rich can afford to buy elsewhere because we will save you money on a new Ford car or truck we have a very fine selection of used cars also at this time. We need more used cars, so if you do have a used car or especially a used truck you want to trade, bring it on over to us because we do need them. Dave Smith Ford, halfway between Columbus and Newark. We want you to be Ohio, the largest walled fort in America is right here in Ohio. Fort Meggs has palisade walls that stretch as far as your eye can see. And to your children, smartly uniformed soldiers that seem to reach the sky. Explore all that Fort Meggs has to offer. It's open Wednesday through Sunday in Perrysburg, just south of Toledo. Fifth inning for the Yankees, Nettles. Johnson and Blair, and we have a dandy going here. Rick Waits, Andy Messersmith hooked up in the scoreless battle. Well, again now, the Indians are right back here tomorrow night, and if you want to see them, get down here because the Yankees will not be back until the last weekend in September, the Indians play. And the Indians will not be back here until next week, so only one more day to see baseball after tonight this week. The weatherman says it's going to be another delightful day tomorrow, so come on down and be with us. Greg Nettles called on at strikes his first time up as Nettles looked at a big sweeping curve over the outside corner. Curve ball inside, ball one. On deck, Cliff Johnson. Curve ball, chop foul at home plate, one ball and a strike. One 
ball, one strike on the left-hand hitting third baseman of the Yankees, Greg Nittle. Curve ball, it's a bit high. Ball two and a strike. Rick Waits with three strikeouts in the game. He's walked a couple. He has had that curveball really popping tonight. Swing and a miss. Fastball blew it right by him over the inside corner. Two and two. Type and back on the edge of the outfield grass. Side on curve, popped up, shallow left field. Out goes Verizon. On comes Grubb. Verizon out, and here comes Grubb to grab it. Boy, Joe, that looked like the beginnings of a very bad accident. Sure did, right until the very last moment when Verizer veered away. You know, fans wonder why, you know, you always say, well, there's no excuse for two players to run together on a pop-up, but that's one of those balls that really no man's land. And they all have to go as hard as they can to get there, and sometimes the point where it's just right in the middle and you can't call quick enough. Here's Cliff Johnson. Raleigh Eastwick has started to warm up for the Yankees. Ball one, too low. Swing and a miss. Good pitch by left-hander over the inside corner. That might have been the fourth ball. One ball and a strike. He's thrown a few this year. He's come up with a pretty good one. On deck is Paul Blair. Cliff Johnson wants the umpire to dust off home plate. One ball, one strike. One man gone. We are in the fifth. No score in this one. Low. Two balls and a strike. Two one pitch. Swing and a miss on the curve. Strike two. Tom Gleha was in St. Vincent's Charity Hospital undergoing some knee surgery and he just got home today, and he can't be here tonight to watch his favorite team, the Indians. Tom and his wife, Karen, have two daughters. They live in East Lake, and they are tuned in, rooting for the tribe. Tom Glehar get that knee well quickly. Two balls, two strikes. Wade starts his windup. Johnson gets time and backs out. 2-2 pitch. Foul ball down the third base side. Hesse runs out to get it. Umpire indicating the ball hits the batter in the batter's box. Two and two. Note here from Ron Sinchak. He was in Texas. He said he's been trotting back and forth. And his girlfriend, Polly Bechtol, and says hello because he has to go way up to Ontario. Okay. Bouncing ball foul, third base side, and it rolls beyond the Indian dugout. Two balls, two strikes on Cliff Johnson. One man gone in the fifth. We have a scoreless battle with the Indians and the Yankees. Waits getting the sign from Hassey. Curveball, swing, and a foul tip. Hit the glove of Hassey and rolled away. Two and two. Gene Michael, the coach at first for the Yankees. Third base side, it is Dick Hauser. Gene Michael last year used to be the eye in the sky, so to speak, for the Yankees. We'll talk about that in a minute. Two balls, two strikes. Brown ball foul, third base side. Gene Michael, who's a Kent State graduate and a lot of relatives still around the Stowe area. He was an executive with the Yankees last year and assistant to the president. And what he did, he would sit in the various press boxes or radio booths or wherever with a walkie-talkie or a telephone and explain where he thought the defense should be. Call down to the dugout. Inside, 3-2. What was it, Chicago, that they threw him out of the press box? Yeah, Bill Beck wouldn't let him sit up there, right? 
Fly ball down the left field line. Foul chasing over his grub, but he runs out of territory. The ball's in the seat. Hits in the first row and bounces down. I want to set the record straight on one little item. The other night I was talking about the ball boys, and I mentioned that David Zabo is of Garfield Heights, as it is written on my sheet of paper. That is not true. David Zabo is from Maple Heights, Ohio. We only, we only read what we see, right? Right. Drive to left field. Johnny Grubb is there, and he flubs it. Well, Cliff Johnson battled Rick Waite, fouling off of about a half a dozen pitches. Finally, lines to left. Two men have gone on fly balls to left field here in the fifth inning. It's Paul Blair. Indians and the Yankees. Good game going. Rick Waite has the sign. First pitch to the right hand hitting right field. A down low ball one. We were talking about Paul before playing in right field in this game, the absence of Reggie Jackson. But I've said this before, and I suppose I'll say it again when we see Blair. Next pitch to him, chop foul at home plate. He is definitely the best center fielder that I have seen come to the American League since I've been around. Defensively, he can just do it all. One ball and a strike. There are times when, with a crack of the bat, he has that instinct just to go where the ball's going to be. Foul back. And, of course, he doesn't play on everyday basis now, and he's in his 30s, but still a plenty good outfielder. Ball on strike two. Rick Waits with two men gone in the fifth inning. Eastwick is still throwing down in the Yankee bullpen. Foul ball, third base side, and grabbed over there by Lou Pinella sitting on the top step of the dugout. Louie underhands it all the way over to the Indian dugout. Grabbed by Jeff Torborg. One ball, two strikes. High and outside with a change. Mr. Smith, of course, has not made an appearance this year. He has gone four innings. The Indians have had only one hit off him. He has struck out three. Fastball just a bit outside, three and two. Could very well be that Yankees have it. Eastbrook warming up just in case. They may be counting it. his pitches a lot. I don't know. High pop, first base side. Wayne Cage back to the outfield grass. He grabs it. And the Yankees are gone. One, two, three in the fifth. Three up, three down. Nothing across. Rick Waite setting them down. At the middle of five, it's the Yankees. Nothing. The Cleveland Indians. Nothing. A line drive to deep center. Tommy Mullins got to get on his horse to get this one going, going. But he's there and makes the catch. Good job by Tommy. Something Everyone with an outfielder thinks about when he drops way back to get under one of those flies. He seems relaxed enough out there, and in that split second before the ball drops into his glove, he might work his jaw once or twice. The reason for that calm look and that slight movement of the jaw might not be his stealing herbs. More likely, it's his chewing tobacco. For a lot of major leaguers, the only tobacco to chew is mail pouch. Some say it relaxes them, takes the dry right away, gives them a pickup. And a lot of them make it their choice for the same reason you do because mail pouch has a taste that's always clean and fresh. A taste that comes only from the finest blend of tobacco leaves, flavored just right. A taste that's in a class by itself. And that goes a long way to get you through the day on the bright side, whatever your game is. Mail pouch, treat yourself to the best. We go now into the bottom half, inning number five. For the Indians, Wayne Cage, Teddy Cox, and Dwayne Kuyper against Andy Messersmith. Bill Hackenberg is having a birthday today, and we wish him a very happy birthday. Also, down the road a little bit, just to our left, Harry Sherman's wife celebrating a birthday. Lois would not say how many, but we wish Mrs. Sherman a very happy birthday. And Mr. and Mrs. Carl Anderson of Akron, Ohio are here tonight, and they are celebrating their 54th wedding anniversary. How about that? First pitch to Wayne Cage, a strike at the knees over the outside corner. First time up, Wayne hit a blistering line drive right at the third baseman, Greg Nettles. Fastball, high and drive, dive by Randolph, the second baseman has it. Oh, my. You talk about hitting and tough luck. Wayne Cage, a line drive to the left. Uh, Willie Randolph, he took a half a step, launched himself through the air, picked it off. Hmm. Well, Wayne 
you hit two balls as hard as anybody can hit them, we don't know what to tell you. I guess you could, you should use that whole, whole axiom, hit him where the ain't. That's what Billy Smith said he was doing over in Baltimore. He had it down to a science over the weekend. Yeah, it's not how hard you hit him sometimes, it's where. Here's Ted Cox, Indian designated hitter. Fly to right is only time up. A line drive that was caught by right fielder Blair. Strike over the outside corner. The fellow who has not pitched this year, Andy Messersmith, has had amazingly good control. High and outside, a ball. He has been nibbling at those corners. Boy, if this guy comes around quickly, look out. Check swing, it's fouled away. Also, they tell us that Don Gullett is likely to be pitching this weekend for the Yankees. The rich get richer. Catfish Hunt has been placed on the disabled list. Catfish having shoulder difficulties. Down low. Ball two, two strikes. One gone. Fifth inning for the Indians. No score in this game. The Indians have a hit. The Yankees have two of them, and that's been it. One error for the Yankees. Rick Waits, Andy Messersmith, hooked up in a pitcher's duel. 2-2 pitch. Check swing, tap right back to the mound. Messersmith flips to first base, two men are out. We'll take a look at Dwayne Kuyper. Dwayne fouled over to the railing to the left of the screen. Thurman Munson racing over to grab the ball. He was in position to catch it, and the fan leaned down and touched it. The umpire ruled it. He was interfered with, and his type was out. Tomorrow night, same two teams, 735. Down low, ball one. Dick Tidrow and Rick Wise will be the opponents. A couple of right-handers. High pop, shortstop side, drifting on the outfield grass is Bucky Dent about 30 feet in the outfield. He makes the grab. Three up, three down. Fifth inning for the Indians. As Mr. Smith and Waits keep rolling along, we have played five in this game. The score, Cleveland nothing and New York nothing. You know, listening to Major League Baseball on 3WJ is a great way to follow the national pastime. But to really appreciate the game and the players' talents, at least once in a while, you should see a game in person. And those of us at 3WJ would like you to see the exciting Cleveland Indians on us during our Tribe Ticket Giveaway. All you have to do is send us your name, address, and phone number. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the noon news, we'll draw a name to win two tickets to an Indians home game of your choice. If your name is drawn, your tickets will go into the mail that same day. And we won't stick you out in the left field bleachers, but in box seats, so you'll be right next to the action. To enter, send your name, address, and phone number on a postcard or letter to Tribe Tickets. 3WJ, P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. Again, that's Tribe Tickets, P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. To win two box seat tickets to a Cleveland Indians baseball game of your choice. Entries are limited to one per week, so enter today and let 3WJ take you out to the ball game. We head into the sixth inning. The Indians and the Yankees have played scoreless baseball. Three hits in the game. The Yankees with a single by Munson in the first. Single by Pinella in the fourth. The Indians with a hit by Norris in the first. And that's all she wrote so far. For the Yankees, we'll see Bucky Dent. Then the top of the batting order, Mickey Rivers and Willie Randolph. Bucky Dent, his first time up, flying to left field. The infield has been groomed by the ground crew, and we're ready to go. Give you a rundown on the scoreboard if you're just joining us, or several games played this afternoon. Curveball, too low, ball one. In the American League, White Sox shut out the Angels 7 to nothing behind Torrey Alba. Fly ball, center field. Rick Manning waits. Now back to step, pounds the glove and makes the catch. One man up, one man down in the sixth inning, and Mickey Rivers heads the home plate. At Milwaukee this afternoon, it was Oakland six, Milwaukee two. Broberg the winner, Augustine the loser. And in Boston, Red Sox 
edged the Toronto Blue Jays 5-4 to four, with Therese getting the win and Underwood taking the loss. Therese now 7-2 and two on the season. Ball loose in the Yankee bullpen. Yeah, have Easterwick out there throwing again. Standing in, left-hand hitting Mickey Rivers. Curve is a strike at the knees. Good curveball right over the top. It exploded. Doubleheader in Texas. First game, it is Texas 6. Ground ball, second base side. Grabbed by Kuiper on a big bounce. Mickey Rivers jogging on the first is thrown out. Two up, two down the sixth inning. Six in a row, polished off by Waite. And the batter, Willie Randolph. Crowd responding to Mr. Rivers' somewhat lethargic trip to first base. That's a nice way to put it. Casual stroll down that way. Willie Randolph. Right-hand hitter. Willie 0 for 1 with a walk. Wade started his motion, slipped on the mound. A game in Texas has gone seven innings, six to nothing. Texas over Minnesota, that's the first of two. Inside low, ball one. At Chase Stadium, a 20-night doubleheader. Mets beat the Cardinals in the first one, seven to two. Cardinals have lost five in a row and 15 out of 16. Down too low with a curveball, 2-0. Oh. Chicago's at Montreal tonight. Scoreless at the end of three. Fryman and Grimsley hooked up. Ah, let me get to the good stuff. Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. Line drive right back to Rick Wade. Oh, boy, a bullet right back to Wade, and the inning is over. Last seven men have gone down before Rick Wade, and he has really pitched well. In the inning, oh, first of all, <laughs> Cubs came up with two in the fourth. At the end of four, it's Cubs two, Montreal nothing. In the inning, no runs, no hits, no errors for the Yankees. At the middle of inning number six, the score, the Yankees nothing, the Indians nothing. What happens if you get laid off your job or if you're forced to retire early? Will you have any savings? Well, at Johnstown Federal, you can set up a regular program of saving now to be in good financial shape later when it really counts. Their current dividend rate is five and a quarter percent on passbook accounts. That's a quarter percent higher than banks are permitted by law to pay. At Johnstown Federal, they'll keep your funds available and insured safe while they earn top interest. See a savings counselor for a realistic savings plan at Johnstown Federal Savings. They're everywhere. I've got one in my office, I've got two in the garage at home, and yesterday I even found one in the men's restroom. This is Dave Smith, and I'm talking about the selection of new Fords at Dave Smith Ford, 10 minutes east of Columbus on Broad Street. We have a fine selection, and I'll save you money on a new Ford or buy you two steak dinners for your trouble. Come out where we offer on-the-spot financing, and it's fun to buy a car. That's Dave Smith Ford, on Broad Street, halfway between Columbus and Newark. I have a new pitcher for the Yankees as Andy Messersmith went five impressive innings in his first outing. One hit, three strikeouts, a walk, and a hit batter. He can win it, he can't lose it. And Riley Easter will try to save it. He's making his fifth appearance. He's gone 13 and a third innings, 15 hits, three runs all earned. Four strikeouts and a walk, one home run yielded. He's 1-0 and with a 2.03 ERA. This is his first appearance against the Indians. He'll be pitching against Ron Hansey. Tom Verizon in the top of the batting order. And we have a scoreless battle. Rick Waits has just been very, very good tonight. I said he could win it, can't lose it. That's not true. He can't have anything to do with it because it is scoreless. Andy Messersmith certainly has to be encouraged as he goes into change uniforms and listen to the rest of the ball game. He has pitched a superb ball game. He and Rick Waits have given these fans some to cheer about. First time up, Ron Hansey was hit on the right elbow by a pitch, and he was really nailed. And he has been all right. Hansey out of the University of Arizona, batting at 222. Digging in. Raleigh Eastwick. Down low, ball one. Nasty. 
Big, strong left-hand hitter. Eastwick winds it up. Off the outside corner ball, too. Ollie Eastwick, long and lanky. Bouncing wall, first base side, coming on Willie Randolph. He has it, throws him out. Nancy, I don't think he really wanted to swing at that ball. He was trying to check a swing, spinning out of the way, and the ball hit the bat. He's out on a 4-3 play, one gone in the sixth inning. Here's Tommy Verizer. 320 down the foul lines here at the stadium. And 400 feet to center field, 375 in the power alley. Now on deck batter, sliding that lead donut up on the barrel of the bat, Rick Manning. Roll over the inside corner, strike. Right at the knees. Last year with St. Louis, Eastwood was 3-7. and seven. Earned run average of 4.67. Time called. And somebody yelling out of the Indian dugout, umpire McCoy, takes off his mask, points the finger, and says, that's enough. Jeff Torborg appears to be the man with the tonsils in the dugout. One strike on Tom Verizon. He swick, delivers. Line drive. It's hard by the shortstop. Sandy grabs it. Oh, boy. We have seen some defensive play tonight that defies description. That was not only a line smash, but it was low and I'd say maybe a little above knee height. He had to dive to his right and backhand that ball. How he got it, I don't know. Randolph and Dent have taken base hits away from Gage and from Verizon. Here's Rick Manning, 0 for 2 in the game. Started off the game by sending Blair to the warning track in right field. Two men out in the sixth. Fastball over the outside corner strike. One ball and a strike. Scoreless game. The Yankees and the Indians. Fans that showed up tonight are getting their money's worth. It's been a good one. Bouncy ball. Short stop side. Dent has it. Throws across. Side retired. 6-3 on that out. 1-2-3. The Indians go in the six. Nothing across. We have played six scoreless innings at the stadium. And the seventh coming along. We'll be back after this message. The day is done. It's time to let it go. It's the moment to unwind. Welcome home. So just say, bud. Say, bud. And for the king of beers and settle back. And half, half of the seventh inning. Oh, a nice note here from Mr. I.D. Frick, I believe that is, or is that Irick? Irick. From uh, Ontario, Canada. Yeah. Marmora, Ontario. Thank you very much for the note. Pitch to Munson. Ball one. Thurman Munson batting in the seventh, leading it off. Big bouncer toward third. Bell to his left. Gobbles it up. Throws across. He is out. One down in the seventh inning. Munson is one for three. Had a hit in the first inning. Lou Pinellas bounced to third and single to left and then was promptly doubled up. No score, seventh inning in what has been a superlative pitching and defensive game. A couple of birthdays that have just gotten to us in the mail tonight. It'll be a day or two late, but we will acknowledge them here as opportunity presents itself. Here's the windup of the first pitch to the right-hand batting, Lou Pinella. It's low and inside, ball one. Seventh inning. Scoreless game. Outstanding defense on both sides. 1-0 pitch, outside, ball two. Here's the 2-0 pitch, and Panella takes low and outside. Ball three, 3-0. Three oh. There's a very nice 
nice note here from uh, Margaret Krieger from Millersburg, Ohio. Happy to know that her daughter, little girlfriend Jody, is back to good health after surgery. That's very nice. Thank you. Three balls and a strike. Pinella at bat, seventh inning. Wind up and pitch. Line drive, left field, base hit. Rupp takes it on a quick hop, and Pinella's two for three on the night. So with one out, one on, three hits off weights. It brings up Chambliss. He has bounced first to the pitcher covering and wrapped into a double play. This game is scoreless. Mesher Smith went five and looked great. Chris hitting 320. Stretch looked to first pitch to Chambliss. He takes a strike at the knees. Strike one. And Sartorius, a longtime fan of the tribe. Happy birthday on the 26th of May. They say these notes just getting to us tonight in the mail. Here's the pitch. Curveball. Strike two. Beauty. Oh, weights had a beauty on that one. Curve of the knees. Also, Brian Buckle celebrated his 14th birthday, May the 27th. Plays for the Faircrest Hawks, who are 5-0. and Two strikes on Chambliss. Seventh inning, waits the stretch, checks first base, and steps back. And Pinella retreats to the bag. The pitch, Chambliss hits a drive out in left center field. Grub into the gap in left center, makes the catch. Pinella turns, racing back to first base. And makes the trip back safely. Well, there are two outs for the runner at first in the seventh inning, and Greg Nettles the batter. He is struck out and popped to the left fielder. Now, Waits has evidently hurt himself. May have pulled a muscle. Jeff Torborg running toward the mound as Waits is doing some bending to the right side of the mound as we look at it. He may well have pulled a muscle. They're going to let him throw a couple. And immediately, Jim Kern gets up in the Indians' bullpen. Carlos Lopez is homered in the first inning for the Baltimore Orioles. It's his third. He hit his second yesterday against the Indians, and that gives Baltimore a run on the top of the first. Waits throwing here in the seventh to see if he has hurt himself. You may remember Roger Moret. Well, he was recently activated by the Texas Rangers, and he is pitching tonight. He's come on in the eighth inning of play. He was the pitcher who slipped into a catatonic state earlier in the year and had undergone treatment, and now is evidently A-OK. It appears that Waits is A-OK. He's going to continue pitching here in the seventh inning after testing that muscle wherever it was. Nettles at bat, stretch and pitch, curve high and tight, ball one. Cliff Johnson on deck. Top of the seventh, the game is scoreless. The Yankees with three hits and an error, the Indians with a single hit. The only hit by the tribe, a Jimmy Norris single to center field with one out of the first inning. Stretch and pitch, curve ball high, ball two. Munson bounced to third. Pinella ripped a single to left, and Chambliss slide to the left fielder. Count goes to 2-0 and on Nettles. Kern heating up in the bullpen. Waits appears to have suffered no ill effects from whatever bothered him there after that one pitch. Curve ball drops in for a strike, and the count is 2-1. and one. Well, I'm going to guess that his muscle problem was in his leg, judging from the way he was doing the deep demands. Sure hasn't affected the way he's throwing. The stretch by Waits. Look to first base. 2 1 pitch. Curveball. Way up in the air to center field. Manning going back. Still going back at the fence. Goodbye. Home run. Greg Nettles just shot one over the 395 sign in right center field. And the Yankees lead 2 0. Greg Nettles, that is his eighth home run of the year.
He has 22 runs batted in, five of them against Cleveland. Somebody once said that he doesn't hit left-handers very well. Mm. He hit a home run off wood, now he's hit one off weight. First pitch to Cliff Johnson is a strike of the E, strike one. Johnson is struck out and lined to left. Hits it hard, foul down the third base line. Strike two. Greg Nettles blast one over the center field fence with a man on here in the seventh inning of play. Wind up, pitch to Johnson. He hits a drive into left field. That's the base hit. Grubb coming over to pick it up. Johnson hangs on with a single. And the Yankees have come up with two runs and three hits here in the seventh inning of play. Paul Blair has bounced to the shortstop and popped up to the first baseman. Stretch by weight. And the pitch to Blair. Wraps a foul beyond the third base dugout off the tarpaulin and the count is strike one. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Cleveland Indians Baseball Network. This is 3WJ, Central Ohio's home for the Cleveland Cavaliers, Browns, and Indians. WWWJ Johnstown. Right stop, Tommy Verizer digs it out, throws over to Kuiper for the force play on Johnson, and the side is retired. But the damage has been done in the top half of the seventh inning for the Yankees. Two runs, three base hits, and one man left on base. We're going to the last half of the seventh inning, and now is the hour. Indian fans, up on your feet for the seventh inning stretch. The score, the Yankees two and the Indians nothing. You know, listening to Major League Baseball on 3WJ is a great way to follow the national pastime. But to really appreciate the game and the players' talents, at least once in a while, you should see a game in person. And those of us at 3WJ would like you to see the exciting Cleveland Indians on us during our Tribe Ticket Giveaway. All you have to do is send us your name, address, and phone number. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the noon news, we'll draw a name to win two tickets to an Indians home game of your choice. If your name is drawn, your tickets go into the mail that same day. And we won't stick you out in the left field bleachers, but in box seats, so you'll be right next to the action. To enter, send your name, address, and phone number on a postcard or letter to Tribe Tickets. 3WJ, P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. Again, that's Tribe Tickets, P.O. Box 373. Three, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. To win two box seat tickets to a Cleveland Indians baseball game of your choice. Entries are limited to one per week, so enter today and let 3WJ take you out to the ball game. Home half of the seventh inning, Raleigh Eastwick will take a look at Norris Spell and Grubb. On the scoreboard, Mets beat the Cardinals in the first of a twilight doubleheader, 7-2. Zachary over Urea. Nothing yet in the second game except the pitchers, Falcone against Swine. Cubs 2-0 over Montreal in the fifth. Atlanta 2-0 over Cincinnati in the fourth. Pittsburgh and Philly scoreless after one. Robinson against Cott. San Francisco and Houston. Halicki against Bannister. San Diego and L.A. Perry against John. This afternoon, White Sox 7-0 over California. Four hitter for Corey Alba. 6-2, Oakland over Milwaukee. Broberg goes the route, and Boston 5-4 over Toronto behind Torres. Pitch to Jimmy Norris is a strike, strike one. Norris, a single to center field in the first inning. That is the only Indian hit, and he struck out of the fourth. Strike one pitch. Norris takes outside. One ball, one strike. A night of the American League. Texas, 6 to nothing over Minnesota in the eighth inning of their first game. Baltimore, one to nothing over Detroit in the first. And Kansas City, three zip over Seattle at the end of one. Curve ball outside. Corner, one ball, two strikes. Here it is two to nothing. New York, Yankees leading on a Nettles home run with the Indians batting in the last of the seventh. Raleigh Eastwick winds up. One, two pitch. Norris takes high. Two balls, two strikes. Chambliss at first, Randolph at second, Dent at short, Nettles at third, Pinella, Rivers, and Blair left to right, Munson catching, and on the mound, Eastwick, foul ball, back to our left, bangs away, and the count is 2-2. 
Buddy Bellandek. Mesher Smith went the first five and looked super. 2-2 two -two pitch. Outside. Full count of three and two. Andy Mesher Smith, five innings, one hit, three strikeouts, a walk, and a hit batter. But Raleigh Eastwick is the man who can win it. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Strike three. Catcher drops the ball. Munson picks it up. Flips down to Chambliss. Norris is out. And there's one down on the seventh. And Jimmy, long distance, shouting back to Larry McCoy, the home plate umpire. Saying I didn't swing. First strikeout for Eastwood. There has been a string now. Of 1, 4, 7, 10, 11 retired in a row by the combination of Messer Smith and Eastwood. Here's the pitch to Buddy Bell, and Buddy fouls it back, strike one. Buddy has wrapped into a double play and struck out. Yankees lead 2 to nothing. Very hazy night here on the late front. Raleigh Eastwood winds up, strike one pitch to Buddy, and Bell takes high and tight. One ball, one strike. Johnny Grubb on deck. Wind up, 1-1 one, one pitch, but he takes a strike on the inside corner above the knees. One ball, two strikes. We have seen a number of defensive jewels tonight, one by Randolph and one by Dent that were spectacular. There's a pitch just a touch low. Two balls, two strikes. Munson jumped up to throw the ball down to third base. He thought it was strike three. Raleigh Eastwick is ready. Winds up the 2-2 pitch. Buddy hits a high fly ball to center field. Rivers out there coming in a few steps and makes the catch to us. John Grubb has walked, stolen a base, got as far as third, the only Indian to do so. And then he struck out in the fourth when Andy Messersmith struck out the side. Two to nothing, New York, on the home half of the seventh inning. Twelve straight Indians have been retired. Eastwood taking a long look now. Here's the windup and the first pitch to Johnny Grubb. Grubb takes low and outside, ball one. Boston has already won its game. Yankees trying to stay within two games at the top. 1 0 pitch. Check swing, strike. One ball, one strike. Wind up by Mesher Smith and the 1 1 pitch to Johnny Grubb. Bounces in and away from Munson all the way over to the third base dugout. Two balls and a strike. Wahoo Club whooping it up tomorrow at noon at Bond Court honoring Al Rosen, the president of the Yankees. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Strike on the knees outside corner 2-2. Billy Martin will be there. Pete Franklin will MC. That ought to be fun. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Here comes the pitch to Johnny Grove. High. Full count of 3-2. Lined up, and the 3-2 pitch. Swing, and a miss. Struck him out on the side as retired 1-2-3. At the end of seven, Yankees two, Indians nothing. Do it any way you want to, but do it in a Dodge from Spitzer Dodge in Columbus. The 1978 Dodge line is the best ever, featuring the new Magnum XE, the totally personal approach to driving excitement. The Magnum XE is your own private island. The most tempting of this year's line is the 78 Dodge Diplomat, a car that fits everyone to a T. And of course, the Dodge fans are in a class by themselves. See them all at Spitzer Dodge, 5100 East Main, Columbus. Dodge, <laughs> Hi, folks. Come into Lucas Appliance and TV Center today, Memorial Day, for our big, big sale. We're giving $50 bills away with many of our appliances and TVs. For example, buy a 19-inch diagonal measure GE TV. Manufacturer suggested list price $479.95 for only $399.95. It's yours, plus you get $50 in cash. 
Sale hours 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. Sale ends today, so hurry, hurry to Lucas Appliance at TV Center in downtown Mount Vernon, 1215 South Main Street. On the scoreboard, the Texas Rangers have added another run, and they are on top now, 7 to nothing over Minnesota in the ninth inning of their first game. Baltimore has a 1 to nothing lead over Detroit in the second inning of their game. McGregor against Sykes, a Lopez homer in that one, and San Francisco and Houston are 1 1 after 1. Madlock is homered for the Giants. Bucky Dent leads it off for the eighth inning. Time called as a giant sized firecracker goes off under the stadium somewhere. Here's the windup and waits first pitch. And Dent check swing, bouncer, third baseman, bell to his left, flips it over to first base, and there's one down in the eighth. Top of the order, Mickey Rivers. He is bounced to the pitcher, walks, stolen a base, and bounced to the second baseman. 0 for 2 on the night. I got a kick out of Rivers. He walks up to home plate like he's about 99 years old. If you put him on the bases, let somebody stroke one, he's off like a rocket. Looks like every step is going to be his last until he has to run. Right. Here's the windup of the pitch by weight. Low ball one. Didn't he just have a fell like that? Jose Cardinal, because he was a Cub, too. And Jose had bad feet. His feet really hurt him. And he walked like he was walking on glass. 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball. Ball two. But then when he had to run, boy, he could move. Cardinal is now with the Philadelphia Phillies. Cubs 2 to nothing over the Expos in the 6th. Priamon against Grimsley. Wind up. 2-0 pitch. Outside, ball three. Willie Randolph on deck. The only runs of this game came on a two-run homer by Greg Nettles in the seventh inning. Here's the 3-0 pitch to Rivers. It is a strike of the knees, 3-1. and Wind up. 3-1 pitch. McGee wraps it toward the second baseman. Piper gobbles it up over to first base. Two outs. Willie Randolph has walked, struck out, and lined to the pitcher. Ned Welk taking the night off, and the public address being handled here at the stadium tonight by Howie Chizik, the pride of Ohio University. Also a man who does duty on one of our network stations. There's a ball low, ball one. Howie, known to his listeners as Howie Allen on a WKNT in Kent. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Now you say the pride of Ohio. You, the third set of base coach, Mr. Nasek, he... Well, there are a lot of prides of Ohio. Right. Here. <laughs> Here's the 1-1 pitch. Wrap back to Kuiper again. Wayne has it on the second hop. Throws over to first. Randolph is out, and so are the Yankees. 1-2-3. Last of the eighth coming up, and the score remains New York 2, Cleveland nothing. Do it any way you want to, but do it in a Dodge from Spencer Dodge in Columbus. The 1978 Dodge line is the best ever, featuring the new Magnum XE, the totally personal approach to driving excitement. The Magnum XE is your own private island. The most tempting of this year's line is the 78 Dodge Diplomat, a car that fits everyone to a T. And of course, the Dodge fans are in a class by themselves. See them all at Spencer Dodge, 5100 East Main, Columbus. Dodge, depend on it. Hundreds of jobs are needed to keep the Air Force running. An amazing total of jobs. But what is more amazing is the fact that most of those jobs are the same in civilian life or the Air Force. To get started in a good job, talk to me, your Air Force recruiter, Mike Schroeder, at my new location next to Cinema 4 in Heath, or call me collect at 522-5740. The United States Air Force, a great way of life. George Foster has just whacked one with two men on down in the fifth inning at Atlanta, and that gives the Reds a 3-2 edge. Raleigh Eastwick will be looking in the eighth inning at Cage, Cox, and Piper. 
Pittsburgh one to nothing over Philadelphia at the end of an inning and a half. Seattle got one of those runs back at Kansas City. It's three to one KC at the end of an inning and a half. San Francisco and Houston are in the third, tied up one one. <laughs> on the on the ticker it says Meadows hit a home run for the Yankees with a man on. Meadows? Somewhere between here and uh, I believe it's Marion, Illinois where they do that. Meadows became Meadows. Meadows became Meadows. Baltimore won to nothing over the Tigers at the end of two. Wayne Cage is lined to third and lined to second. Now the line drive he hit the third base was right at Meadows but the line drive he hit toward right field Willie Randolph made a spectacular diving catch-up. And then Bucky Dent, not to be outdone, turned around and pulled off a similar stab off the bat of Horizon. Indians with just one hit. Here's the windup and the first pitch to Cage. Strike to the outside corner, strike one. The face hit, the Indians have came in the first inning with a man out. Norris lined a single at center field, and he was the front end of a double play. Wind up and pitch. Strike two. Cage unhappily strolls away from home plate. Robert Eastwick ready with the 0-2 pitch to Wayne Cage. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Eastwick has spanned three of the last four that he has faced. Six strikeouts for Yankee pitcher. Ted Cox. Slide to right, bounce to the pitcher in two previous trips. First pitch and Teddy swings and misses. Strike one. Wayne Kuyper on deck. Wind up by Eastwick on the pitch. Cox takes a strike of the letters, and the count is strike two. He's quick, delivers again. Cox takes outside, one ball and two strikes. First game is over down in Arlington, Texas. Seven to one, Texas over the Twins. Pitch, Cox takes fastball low. Two balls, two strikes. Mr. Smith, who started this game and worked five innings, and now Eastwick, they have really been nipping those corners. 2-2 pitch. Cox fouls it back, and the count is still two balls and two strikes. Three-hitter in that first game at Arlington tonight on the combined pitching of Ellis and Moret. Swing and a miss. Gutty. Cox strikes out. Two outs in the eighth. Four strikeouts for Eastwick. Now here's a guy that pitches about once every two weeks, and he's looking tough. Dwayne Kuyper has fouled to the catcher, popped to the shortstop, and Dwayne takes a pitch at the letters for a strike, strike one. Sixteen Indians in a row have gone down. Next pitch, Kuiper wraps it by the mound. Second baseman Randolph in, grabs and throws. One, two, three. At the end of eight, Yankees two, Indians nothing. This is old Jack at Ostrander Chevrolet in Mount Vernon, where your friends just bought that new Chevrolet. Why? Because we have the finest in service and the finest in parts, and the best doggone deals you ever heard of. We've got five courteous salesmen to serve you and six acres of convenient parking while you shop. That's at Ostrander Chevrolet, 3 and 36, south on the busy side of town, Mount Vernon.
Who's the man who can offer you almost all kinds of insurance protection? Your motorist insurance agent, Milton L. Resch in Pataskala. Motorist offers auto insurance and also specializes in homeowner's insurance. Motorist insurance also offers all kinds of life insurance policies. It's a full-line insurance company. Motorist insurance. You know Just ask your motorist agent. Look him up in the phone book. Milton L. Resch, 112 International Drive in Pataskala. Motorist Insurance. You know us. Ninth inning, Munson, Pinnell, and Shambliss. Two to nothing, New York, and the only runs of the game came in the seventh with one out. Pinella singled with two out, Nettles put one over the center field fence above the 395 fence. Left hander Rick Waite has pitched a five hitter tonight and now stands in jeopardy of losing. Pitch, curve ball low, bounces away from Hassey, ball one. Waits all set, lines up. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Munson. Fastball rides high. The count is 2-0. Tomorrow night, it'll be Rick Wise going for the Indians and Dick Tidrow for the Yankees. There's a slap and one hop for Riser. Couldn't handle it. The ball ricochets off the heel of his glove, picked up by Bell. It was a hard smash. Riser tried to short hop it and couldn't get the handle. Base hit for Munson, his second of the night. Lou Pinella, the batter. Pinella, two for three. He rode home on Nettles' home run on the seventh inning. Kansas City is knocked out. Dick Pohl in the second inning. Stretch by Waits. Pitch. Fastball low. Ball one. The Western Division race starting to tighten up. Oakland back in first place with their win and California's loss this afternoon. Stretch pitch. Pinella hits a drive in the right center field. Norris racing over. Reaches up, makes the catch. Spins to throw, but Munson's back to first base safely, and there is one out of the night. Jeff Torborg coming out of the dugout. Shambless do. He has bounced to the first baseman, wrapped into a double play, and flied to left. In the bullpen, Kenny the left-hander, Kern the right-hander. Kuiper, Hassey, Waits, and Torborg together on the mound. Pittsburgh one to nothing over Philadelphia at the end of two innings of play. The Phillies have dropped nine of their last 12 games. Umpire Larry McCoy going out to the mound. He wants the conversation to break up. On the scoreboard, they have two big hands twiddling <laughs> thumbs. That's pretty good. They've put some more animation into the scoreboard while we've been gone. It's working very well. Well, Waits will now work on Chris Chambliss. The pitch, Chambliss for the curveball. Checked his swing, took a strike. Strike one. Lee May has blasted his 10th in the third for Baltimore with two men on, and they now lead Detroit 4 to nothing. The pitch, Chambliss takes another breaking ball low, and the count is 1-1. One and one. Kenny and Kern in the bullpen for the Indians. The stretch. Pitch to Chambliss, low, as he digs it off the top of the dirt, two and one. Two to nothing, Yankees in the top of the ninth. Munson at first base and one out. Two one count on Chambliss, Nettles on deck. Stretch and pitch. Curve ball, check swing, ball hits the bat, bounces foul to the screen. Two balls, two strikes.
Indians get one more shot at Raleigh East, Eastwick in the last half of the ninth inning. A time called. Waits wants to exchange baseball for the home plate umpire. Kansas City 5-1 to one over Seattle at the end of two. Looks like the Royals have their problems straightened out. They're going for their fifth in a row. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Chambliss fans, that's the fourth strikeout for Rick Waits. He's walked two. And here's the guy who did him dirty the last time. Nettle. Slam going over the center field fence. His eighth home run of the year with a man on him. That is the destroying story in this game. Montreal has taken a 3-2 to two lead on the Cubs after six. Stretch by weight, looked the first pitch to Nettles, taps it by the mound, off the hand of the pitcher, deflected to Kuiper, going to go to first base, and got it. 1-4-3 on the put out of Nettles in the ninth, and the inning is over. No runs and a hit, man left, one more shot in the gun for the Indians. Going to the last half of the ninth inning, it is New York 2, Cleveland nothing. This is Dave Smith of the Dave Smith Board. On Broad Street, we're halfway between Columbus and Newark. We sell new boards. We will save you money. In fact, we have a little statement we make. If we can't save you money on a new board, I'll buy you two steak dinners. And we don't buy very many steak dinners. So come on over and see us. We've got a fine selection right now. New and used cars, over 200 new cars, almost 100 used cars. So if you want a new Ford or a used car, come see us on Broad Street. Jamal Wilkes of the Los Angeles Lakers talks about what it would mean to be a father. I think that would be a lot of responsibility, you know, I couldn't just get up and do things that I have to think about my child. Once a child is here, it's your child. There's no getting around that. So I would just say be very careful about what you do and who you do it with. Parenting is not a game. Don't play around with it. A message from the U.S. Public Health Service. in the last half of the ninth inning for all the Eastwick we'll look at Hassey, Verizer and the top of the order Manny Ron Hassey has been hit by a pitch bounced to second he was the first man that Eastwick faced when he came on to relieve Messersmith on the sixth Andy Messersmith went the first five and was outstanding one hit three strikeouts a walk and a hit batter if that is a preview of what he is going to put together for the Yankees. Oh, my, my, my. That Red Sox-Yankee tussle just may gallop away from the whole rest of the league. <laughs> they got an Indian swinging on a vine over a load of crocodiles, and then a big sign flashes up on the board that says, Hang in there, tribe. <laughs> Amen. Last of the night, the Yankees leading two to nothing. They've really come up with some excellent animation on that scoreboard out in center field. In the bullpen, Sparky Lyle is shooting up. Here's the windup and the first pitch to Ron Hassey, and Hassey takes the strike, strike one. Indians have had just one hit in the game. Norris single to center field, and the first inning was doubled up. Here's the strike one pitch. Hansi chops a ball down the first baseline foul. Glove by Rocky Calavito. Strike two. And Hansi broke his bat. The other base runners for the Indians. Grubb walking in the second inning leading off. Got as far as third. And Hansi hit by a pitch. Then a forced play and a double play took care of that. And since that double play, the Indians have been up and down in order in every inning. Andy Messersmith and Robbie Eastwick have been a dynamic duo. Eastwick looks in for the sign. Here's the windup. 0-2 pitch. Low and outside. One ball, two strikes.
Next pitch to Hassey. Check swing. Pitch low. Count even. Two balls. Two strikes. Raleigh Eastwick is ready. His 2-2 pitch to Ron Hassey. Outside. Full count of 3-2. and two. Last of the ninth. Here comes the payoff pitch to Hassey. Line drive, center field. Rivers stamps it. One out. Well, the Indians have only had one hit tonight, and when they have hit the ball hard, it's been right at somebody. Tom Verizer will bat. He has had a fielder's choice. Line to the shortstop. Death made a spectacular grab of a diving to his right. Lined up by Eastwick and the first pitch to Tommy. Verizer pops it up. Third base side foul. Nettles going behind the coach's box under the ball. Two outs. And that brings it right down to Rick Manning. He is fly deep to right. Bounced into a double play. And bounced to the shortstop. Last of the night. Two outs. Nobody out. Eastwick is ready. Here's the windup and the pitch to Manning. Outside, ball one. Wind up again. The 1 0 pitch. Drive foul upstairs, left side. It just shy of the loach and into the chairs downstairs. One ball, one strike. Jimmy Norris on deck. He has the game's only hit for the Indians. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch to Manny. Low and outside, 2-1. and one. Indians on the brink of being shut out for the 18th consecutive inning. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Fly ball, foul, left field line. Pinella coming over, the ball drops foul down in the bullpen area and bounces out of play. 2-2. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. New York leads two to nothing in the last of the ninth. Wind up by Eastwick. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Bouncing ball up the middle. Randolph gobbles it up. Throws, and the game is over. Yankee pitching retired 20 straight Indians. Three up, three down. Final score. New York 2, Cleveland nothing. We'll start to wrap up after this timeout. The day. It's time to let it go. It's the moment to So just say the And for the king of beers. And settle back. And please yourself. No matter what you do. No matter when or where. You know, a glass of blood is like an easy chair when you say blood dies over. You said it all. When you say blood dies over, you said it all. When you say blood dies over, you said it all. all. And I, the Bush, St. Louis. Well, the Indians got a one-hit treatment from the Yankees tonight. A one-hitter on the combination of Andy Mesher Smith and Robbie Eastwood. Yankees two runs, six hits, one error. The Indians no runs, one hit, and no errors. Winning pitcher Robbie Eastwood going the final four in relief of Andy Mesher Smith. Eastwood's record is now two and zero. Oh. And Rick Waits went the distance, took the loss on a six-hitter, and they just said that. His earned run average just dropped down to 3.29, but it's still a loss, and it's also his fifth complete game of the year. The Indians, as I say, left only one man on base, the Yankees four, and the only thing that really mattered, outside of the outstanding pitching and some fine defense, a two-run homer by Greg Nettles in the seventh inning of play, his eighth of the year, and that was the scoring story. I'll have more for you after this timeout. 
35 ball game here at the stadium and the Indians now at 20 and 24 1 and 4 against the Yankees the tribe 11 and 8 at home the Yankees are 29 and 15 they've won their last three in a row and they are 13 and 10 on the road and they remain two games behind the Boston Red Sox while the Indians are going to remain in fifth in sixth place for at least one more night regardless of what Baltimore does and as I say tomorrow night's ball game 735 then the Indians will take two days off and head for Milwaukee for the weekend, playing them Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and a Sunday doubleheader. Then home for a week, the White Sox are in for two games. Incidentally, next Monday night's game with the White Sox has been changed to an 8.05 start. Then uh, the White Sox in the next night. Toronto comes in for a twenty-night doubleheader on Wednesday the 7th, an open day Thursday, followed by a single games against Minnesota Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon before the Tribe hits the road for a few days. So... Hope uh, to have a better story for you tomorrow night. You can't pitch much better than Waits did, unless your name is Andy Messersmith or Rob Eastwick, because they did, and they helped the Yankees to a 2 to nothing victory engineered on Greg Nettle's home run. Closing comment after this timeout. This is old Jack. We don't have a whole lot of baseball, hot dogs, and apple pie at those stranders ever lay in Mount Vernon. But we do have lots and lots of nice new Chevys in all models. Plus two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive trucks, vans. Yes, you name it. Ostrander Chevrolet has it. And a whole bunch of nice, clean, used cars and trucks. Deal where your friends deal. At Ostrander Chevrolet on 3 and 36 South of Mount Vernon. Race car drivers. <laughs> Baseball players. <laughs> Football players. Professionals like these face danger every day, and they all wear helmets for protection. Motorcycle riders are pros, too. That's why they wear helmets. They won't let a head injury take them out of the action. For more information on motorcycle safety, write the Ohio Department of Highway Safety, Columbus, Ohio, 43205. We invite you now to stay tuned for the 10th inning show. Out of all the scores of all the games, and Herb will be chatting with uh, a former Major League catcher turned broadcaster, Fran Healy. Announcers for this broadcast, selected and paid by 3WE Radio. In one hour and 57 minutes tonight, it was New York 2 and Cleveland nothing. Cleveland Indians baseball on 3WJ. Indians baseball brought to you by Mike Mosher Certified Station in Mount Vernon. Why not pamper your car? Ostrander Chevrolet on Harcourt Road just south of Mount Vernon. By Shoemaker Tool Rental with two locations in Columbus and Lancaster. Mazza's Restaurant in Mount Vernon. The word quality is synonymous with Mazza's. Dave Smith Ford, 10 minutes east of Columbus on Broad Street. Barney's at the corner of Beck and Mohawk in German Village. Mail Pouch Chewing Tobacco. Anheuser-Busch Brewers of Budweiser, the king of beers. There's no better way to relax than with the easy taste of Budweiser. By Spitzer Dodge, 5100 East Main in Columbus. At Marco Polo Lounge on West 5th Avenue in Columbus. Across from North Star, 3WJ and Cleveland Indians Baseball, an exclusive of your total sports station in Central Ohio, 3WJ.
This is old Jack. I don't stand your Chevrolet in Mount Vernon. Hey, we don't have baseballs, hot dogs, and apple pie, but we carry the best darn cars and trucks built. Chevrolets. And then maybe you want a nice, clean used car or truck. We have them in several makes and models, 50, 60 to choose from. So whatever your needs may be, we have it or we can get it. Deal where your friends deal at Ostrander Chevrolet, 510 Harcourt Road, 3 and 36 South of Mount Vernon. A line drive to deep center. Tommy Mullins got to get on his horse to get this one going, going. But he's there and makes the catch. Good job by Tommy. So Everyone on an outfielder thinks about when he drops way back to get under one of those flies. He seems relaxed enough out there, and in that split second before the ball drops into his glove, he might work his jaw once or twice. The reason for that calm look and that slight movement of the jaw might not be his stealing herbs. More likely, it's his chewing tobacco. For a lot of major leaguers, the only tobacco to chew is a mail pouch. Some say it relaxes them, takes the dry right away, gives them a pickup. And a lot of them make it their choice for the same reason you do. Because mail pouch has a taste that's always clean and fresh. A taste that comes only from the finest blend of tobacco leaves, flavored just right. A taste that's in a class by itself. And that goes a long way to get you through the day on the bright side, whatever your game is. Meal pouch. Treat yourself to the best. You know, listening to Major League Baseball on 3WJ is a great way to follow the national pastime. But to really appreciate the game and the players' talents, at least once in a while, you should see a game in person. And those of us at 3WJ would like you to see the exciting Cleveland Indians on us during our Tribe Ticket Giveaway. All you have to do is send us your name, address, and phone number. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the noon news, we'll draw a name to win two tickets to an Indians home game of your choice. If your name is drawn, your tickets go into the mail that same day. And we won't stick you out in the left field bleachers, but in box seats, so you'll be right next to the action. To enter, send your name, address, and phone number on a postcard or letter to Tribe Tickets. 3WJ, P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. Again, that's Tribe Tickets, P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. To win two box seat tickets to a Cleveland Indians baseball game of your choice. Entries are limited to one per week, so enter today and let 3WJ take you out to the ball game. The 10th inning, a wrap of today's Cleveland Indians baseball game and scores from around the league, is brought to you after every Cleveland Indians baseball game here on 3WJ. The 10th inning and Cleveland Indians baseball are a part of 3WJ's total sports presentation. Well, now on our post-game show, we're going to chat with a fellow who was a few months ago was in uniform, that's Fran Healy. In fact, Francis Healy started out as a catcher in the Indian organization. I recall Fran Healy getting a very substantial bonus from the Indians, and he was a catcher who could throw a ball through a wall. <laughs> Fran, you've had, you had some good years. You went to Kansas City, went to the Yankees, enjoyed a championship club, and now you're in the radio booth. Yes, I am, Herb, and I'm enjoying it. Of course, let's, let's go back to that bonus now. Uh, it wasn't as big as it was reported to be, but uh, uh, it was a thrill. I signed with the Cleveland Indians. In fact, I came out here and worked out in 1964. Hoot uh, Evers, who was the farm director, and a gentleman named, a gentleman named Mr. McNally, I uh, had me fly out, and I worked out with the Indians, enjoyed it very much, and uh, eventually signed with the Indians. Of course, I've been very fortunate. I've played eight years on a major league level, and, uh, of course, to cap my career uh, with the New York Yankees was a big thrill for me because I uh, grew up in Massachusetts and grew up under the mystique of the New York Yankees. Fran, you were telling me before the game that during spring training you were still on the roster with the Yankees, still playing, and Andy Messersmith, of course, had been signed by the Yankees during the offseason. He had undergone elbow surgery, and nobody really knew whether he could throw or not, but you told me he threw the ball well in the spring. Yes, he did. In fact, I believe everybody was apprehensive. They, they really weren't sure what was going to happen, and I warmed him up his first day in camp, and he was overpowering. It surprised me. His first day throwing hard, good slider, good changeup, and he fools around with a screwball. But uh, the interesting thing is uh, it was the first day of spring training, so obviously he was throwing all winter to get himself in shape, and... Uh, this is unusual because he's a veteran, and they usually come to spring training and just try to work themselves in shape. Plus, he hurt himself in the spring, broke a collarbone, and here tonight made his first appearance. And from up here, I was the thing that really amazed me, not that he threw the ball so well, because I thought he threw pretty well, the fact that he had such good control. Herbie had excellent control. I thought he started out a little bit shaky. Uh, I felt he might have been out there feeling 
uh, not confident, maybe a little anxious, even though experienced in many years on a major league level. But he got his stuff together after a couple innings through strikes through, uh, and had good location on the ball and, and chalked up a number of strikeouts for himself. Fran Healy, I guess. Fran, the New York Yankees now seem to be playing the best ball. Billy told me this the other day in New York, but for a while he was sort of struggling in and out. Now he seemed to be putting everything together. Jeez, I, I hope there's no correlation between uh, me leaving the Yankees and them starting <laughs> to play good ball. But that, that's right. You you uh, you left just uh, what? How far into the season was it when they when you went to the radio? It was about a week and a half ago, and uh, since then they've been playing good ball. <laughs> well, of course the Yankees uh, do have some roster problems. They're going to have some more roster problems because today they put Catfish on the disabled list to make room for Nessa Smith. But you have good. Uh, you have uh, Gullet coming back. Yes, we do. Uh, Gullet, of course, I, I guess they might activate him next week, and, and I think they have one spot on the roster open, and uh, Gullet might take that spot. And, of course, with a guy like Gullet and a guy like Meza Smith being added to this already very good pitching staff, for the Yankees are going to be tough throughout the season. Well, they've been tough on the Indians, and today, tonight, of course, the Yankee pitching with Meza Smith and Eastwick retired the last 20 batters. Even though I guess it's one of those games as a ball player, you realize it, and you say it once while fans listening in say, ah, they're just saying that. But the Indians tonight hit the old Adam ball. Every time they hit it hard, it was at somebody. And that happens to a team that's not hitting. It certainly does. And, of course, you know, the pitcher throwing a strike is the most important thing in baseball. Get ahead of the hitters. And Meza Smith and Eastbrook were getting ahead of the Indian hitters. But the Indians were putting the ball in play, and they were hitting the ball at the Yankee fielders. And of course, Rick Waits tonight pitched himself really a superb game. He reminds me a lot of Paul Splitorf. Uh, he's got that nice fluid motion. He's got a good fastball and a good uh, off-speed curveball. And I think he's going to be a fine pitcher. Well, he hopes he gets more runs than he had tonight. Fran Healy was with us tonight. And, Fran, we thank you for stopping by. I know that you uh, have to jump back in the radio booth. We certainly appreciate you coming for being with us. We have a gift certificate for you from J.B. Robinson Jewelers. J.B. Robinson, the main leader. Thanks, Fran. Thank you, Herb. Stay tuned now. Joe will be back, and he'll run down the scoreboard after we have this time out. Only the rich can afford to buy elsewhere. That's a little slogan that I've made up. This is Dave Smith of Dave Smith Ford. And that is right. Only the rich can afford to buy elsewhere because we will save you money on a new Ford car or truck. We have a very fine selection of used cars also at this time. We need more used cars, so if you do have a used car or especially a used truck you want to trade, Bring it on over to us, because we do need them. Dave Smith Ford, halfway between Columbus and Newark. Where did you get these leaves? I brought them back from my trip to Mexico. You broke the law. You could have to pay a fine. Please, I'll tell the futures here. It's illegal to import certain foods, plants, and animal products. Why? Pests. These have citrus black flies. Yeah. Next time, before you travel abroad, write for the free booklet that explains the law. Write Traveler's Tips, USDA, Washington, D.C., 20250, Alaska Travel Agency.